Hey, good afternoon. Uh, so today, afternoon session, we are going to devote to reading scientific literature. Well, these slides uh, are prepared by keeping uh, science and engineering students. You see certain uh, terminology being used, but I notice that there is a large fraction of faculty from humanities here. And uh, I want to make it uh, clear that it is not uh, that the word science should not uh, alienate them, should not separate them. Uh, in today's context, actually, science has a very, very broad meaning, in particular the scientific method. Uh, the scientific method has percolated to every branch of knowledge. So actually, when in literature, if you are doing a PhD, actually you are being trained to use scientific method to analyze the literature. That's what I would claim. Uh, just reflect, those of you who have a background in humanities and let's say you have done your PhD in humanities, you have some hypothesis and then you collect evidence from the literature or uh, you know, by conducting certain experiments and uh, use those, uh, you know, use those exp experiments to support your hypothesis. So what you do is you actually uh, end up doing a scientific study of the topic that you have undertaken. Okay. So the method of science actually has percolated every, every discipline. So you shouldn't feel that this is not for me, this is for people who are doing engineering and science. Just don't go by this word uh, science here or the scientific method doesn't necessarily mean you are going to apply it only for doing some, uh, you know, the so-called natural sciences. It could be social science, it could be any other uh, investigation that is undertaken scientifically. When I say scientifically, you have to follow the method that was uh, shown to you. You have to have a hypothesis. Your hypothesis should explain your uh, basic, uh, you know, observations. And then those observations, you could come up with more predictions using a hypothesis and you should actually corroborate uh, those predictions using tests and so on. Okay. So, uh, so those of you who are uh, who are from humanities background, um, probably you your department has been handling the course of technical communication. Um, so whatever I am talking is equally relevant in any domain. It's not necessarily only in natural sciences or engineering. So technical work implies you are trying to solve a problem, and just a quick overview of what. Uh, we have done uh, and you have to have a question and you have to have a, a crisp answer for this question at the end of your endeavor. So a question uh, would involve clearly stating aim or objective of your work will actually give and it, it could actually formed as an interrogative question, interrogative question uh, who, what, where, why and so on. And your answer, in short, in crisp form, will give you uh, what is it that what is it that you achieved through uh, the scientific endeavor. So this it could be that it's it's your own scientific endeavor, which you are uh, trying to summarize through the question and answer. It is possible that you are trying to read somebody else's work and then come up with the question that that person or that group of researchers have posed, and then the answer they have found. The second thing that we emphasized in the morning was that uh, this is how the scientific method works. Okay. So, first of all, you, you um, since you have a question, you start doing experiments, you may have observations. If you have interesting observations which nobody else has seen before, you end up uh, communicating those observations. Uh, you go back to literature and see 
uh, if some old hypothesis is not useful to explain some new phenomena, then you come up with a new new hypothesis and uh, revised hypothesis, and then uh, you know you come up with predictions using your new hypothesis, then uh, come up with a test for that hypothesis, and the process goes on. So this is an iterative process. It develops, it improves itself, and all of us, indirectly or directly, uh, contribute to this exercise. When I say directly, when you are writing a report, or you are writing a paper, or you are writing a thesis, indirectly, when you are training your students to do this. Okay, so we are actually contributing to this entire process of maybe. Our contribution to a, to some solving some bigger problem could be very very small. Maybe you have just verified some small hypothesis, small you applied it to some small problem. Doesn't matter. So uh, you know everyone's contribution matters. So what are the types of scientific literature? Okay. So at the forefront of any scientific research in any domain, okay, are the journal articles. So again, again and again, I want to stress scientific, as in, it could be a scientific investigation taken up, taken up in the area of literature. So, uh, so are the journal articles, and then in every domain there are leading journal articles, journal uh, journals that publish uh, research articles. If you look at, if you try to classify these journal articles, uh, they could be letters. So letters are typically short communications. Uh, which are typically published, uh, you know, they are they are named differently in different domains. In some cases, they are called as short communications. In some domains, they are called as letters. So, uh, depends upon your subdomain where you are working. Uh, so, these are typically uh, some quick results uh, that, or some small improvements that you want to publish. Uh, for the wider audience, then there are original articles. The original articles are typically full-length papers. So, in in the area in which I work, it's called full-length paper or a regular paper. Uh, so, this would this would have uh, you know a detailed treatment of a hypothesis or development of a new model or conducting uh, experimental uh, verification of some existing model and so on. So, this could be a fairly uh, involved. Uh, Thing, but it's it's specific to one particular small topic, and the third kind of articles that are are published in journals are review articles. So review articles are the ones in which experts are invited to collect a development in a particular area over a period of time, and then uh, you know come up with a, a a sort of a coordinated. Presentation of the developments over the last few years. This could be in 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 different areas. It could be uh, some subfield of mathematics. It could be some subfield of science. It could be you know uh, we have this department of uh, education technology in our uh, in IIT where people look at what are the effective methods of uh, teaching students undergraduate level, postgraduate level, and so on. So maybe some expert collects. Developments in effective ways of teaching over the last ten years, and uh, adds his or her own interpretation, you know, uh, comments on uh, what is important, what is not important, uh, and then comes up with a review article. So all these three classes of uh, papers are important. Okay, uh, they, if you want to know where the research is actually happening. It's these two, the original articles and the letters. The review articles is something like trying to screen and collect what is good, uh, what is relevant, and what is worth, uh, you know, taking forward by some experts. Then you see uh, these monographs. These monographs are typically a collected body of work on some specialized topic, specialized area. Okay. Uh, Let's say somebody is working on wireless communication using certain kind of antennas, and then there is some development over the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, one expert or maybe a group of experts come together and write a monograph, a research monograph, 
A research monograph is typically, uh, you know, an advanced level book. I won't call it a textbook, advanced level book, which collects the recent developments in a fairly detailed manner so that uh, an expert can benefit from this. The target audience is typically those who are doing research or, uh, you know, practicing research group in industry or, you know, so, so it's, it's meant for experts and the experts who are involved in modifying things and developing things and so on. At a next level are handbooks and encyclopedias. So this is where uh, experts are again invited to summarize uh, technical developments for a wider audience. Okay. So this is not necessarily for, a, for a, you know, technical expert or researcher. This is for practitioner, a lay practitioner. Uh, who is in the field would would need to use the accepted theories and encyclopedias do that task so uh, of reaching out to these uh, people and at the bottom of this uh, you know technical uh, or science or scientific literature are the textbooks the textbooks are meant for beginning beginners for educating undergraduates whom you are training to uh, be later on to be experts in the field. So actually if you trace the development okay, in time, this is actually evolution of a hypothesis into a theory. Okay. So this is where this is where you have you present theories which have been very well accepted. Okay very uh, the, the theories or the set of hypotheses and models that have stood the test of multiple test of falsification okay and everyone agrees all the experts as of now agree that this is the way you uh, explain a particular topic uh, so this is the level this is the level which is the most calm okay it's if you if i if you want me to give you a comparison this is like a river. Well, probably all of you know uh, whether you know fluid mechanics or not. Is that uh, the water at the bottom is not flowing. It's mostly stagnant. Particularly next to the, you know, the river bottom, there is a layer which is completely stagnant. It is not changing. It is, if it is changing, it is changing very, very slowly. Okay. But as you go up in a river bed, in a river, okay, uh, you see there is a lot of turbulence. Okay, so the same is true. Same is true at this level. Okay, people or the research groups, researchers are arguing. Or you know, it's the same thing that happened today morning. Okay, except what you are arguing about is different. Okay, so you have some research problem, and then uh, different research groups are arguing about what is the correct way of explaining it. What is the best model? What is the best hypothesis? And that is where there is no agreements. Okay, there is no unique way of explaining. You are questioning everything. At this level, at this level, you don't expect a student to come and question. At this level, at a textbook level, you want the student to accept and uh, reproduce whatever is accepted theory. He or she should be without questioning should be able to. So these two levels are are the ones in which you never question. You just accept and reproduce whatever has been said by the experts. But this is where uh, the turbulence begins and this is where there is maximum turbulence. There is no agreement in many, many times. So if you, uh, just to connect with, a, with any technical document, okay, any paper in any domain, whether in literature or in science or in te technology or engineering. Okay. Uh, it is roughly organized into these uh, sections that I'm going to talk about. This is, this is something that has uh, you know, evolved over a period of time. And maybe what we have listed here with one or two differences is true in every domain. So just correct, correct us if we have. So. so of course, first thing that you look at is the title. The title tells you about it's a short sentence that tells you what is being investigated in a particular paper. 
well why why are we going to talk about uh, discussing why are you going to discuss about how to read a paper okay uh, because because the other things how to read a textbook all of us uh, have already been trained how to read a textbook okay what is not what we are not trained for is how to read a paper and many times when you start doing any independent work any independent project okay you have to cross the boundary of you know textbook and encyclopedias and start entering into monographs research papers and you are forced to read papers you are forced to read the literature where things are not things are fluid they are not completely crystallized into a theory okay that's why you should know how to read a paper and we are going to focus and spend some time on how to read a paper so you should look at author and affiliation an important thing you should know where the paper is coming from that gives credibility to the paper you know if it's it's coming from a very renowned school if if your paper is coming from tifr or it is coming from tata, tata school of social sciences well you know that the researcher is you know well acknowledged uh, and you know you you can uh, believe his or her opinion and or researchers group of researchers the next thing is of course the abstract which gives you what is being done in this technical work uh this is followed by introduction the introduction is uh typically mixed with liter literature review in some cases in some 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 domains these two are kept separate is a separate introduction and separate literature review so this is this is where actually uh you know this part of the so this is a this is a cartoon that shows how a paper is organized okay so what this what this is trying to tell you is that uh there are broader implications of what you are being what is being done in the paper those are discussed in the beginning and in the end okay this is connecting this is connecting your paper with the literature which is available okay what is the significance what are the what observations are being explained and what are the new observations that you are going to make specific problem okay specific uh, hypothesis that you advance the you know uh, evidence that you create is given here and in the end there are conclusions which are broader implications of uh what you are investigated so uh main body of the work consists of the method the results and discussion and then you again connect with your conclusions connect with the broader literature broader investigations being taken by the scientific community uh and of course in the end you provide references which is the support for you know which is that you have looked at the literature and then uh, you are trying to build upon the literature so all these this is the, this is a typical organization of a of any research paper in any domain so is there any correction to this anything to be added this is broadly the uh, organization of a paper in any domain in humanities in yeah Keywords. Keywords in abstract and introduction will be adding keywords. keywords. Yeah. So how exactly we have to decide which keywords? How to decide keywords? So that we will that we will come later, at some point in the right. So right now I am not going to talk about it. So keywords could be uh, an important uh, an important component. Okay. Between the abstract and introduction and literature review is almost a similar kind. Of depends upon the domain. It depends upon. which uh even within say chemical engineering i am from chemical engineering and he is also from chemical engineering but he works in fluid mechanics i work in control systems so the conventions are different so uh it could be that some uh, authors like to or some in some in some journals you just write a crisp introduction and then go to literature review in some cases you just mix two into one okay so this could be together this could be in one But usually, in humanities, sir, both are different thing. Introduction, yeah. you are introducing the subject, subject. and then uh, you are going for the review of literature. Yes. So these two yes. are. Sir. So that's what. So it, within humanities also, you might find different conventions in, say, linguistics might be different from sociology. Yeah, you know. It depends on the length of the report. Also, it depends upon length of the report. But even if you, so, this is for a full length paper. If you take a full length paper, these are typically the sections. Typically, yeah. uh well, i think one more that is objectives or the hypothesis of the paper we should it, it should be a kind of uh, element there no 
objectives of the paper? No, no, so those are stated typically in abstract and introduction. So I am talking about organization of a paper that is across domains. It is, they are the broad sections. So you explain the objectives in the introduction section and in the abstract. Yeah, yeah. yeah acknowledgements, uh, we are listing here the uh, technical components of the paper. Okay. So acknowledgement is important. Well, who is funding who? Who is giving you money is important, of course. Uh, but uh, not every investigation will be funded like this. Some cases could be. So let me continue with the next important part that I'm going to talk about a method to read a research paper. Now, uh, question is that who is the target audience? So who, who are expected to read a research paper? Okay. First of all, uh, reading something that involves research starts coming when a student, undergraduate student, comes to his final year. In the final year, there is normally a project. Okay. And a difference between the courses that a student takes and a project is that in the courses, the student is not given a hypothesis or is not expected to come up with a hypothesis to explain some observation. In, in the courses, he is taught a theory that this is how it is. You know, if uh, apple is falling, this is the law of gravitation. Okay. You are not supposed to question. You are supposed to understand how apple falls using gravitation, how moon rotates around the earth using, you know, uh, driven by the gravitation, gravitational force. And same thing about, say, earth and the sun. You are not supposed to question here. Okay. But when student starts his or her own first project, okay, that is where they are supposed to carry out some independent investigation. Okay. So, so what we are going to present here is not relevant only for people who are doing research. It's for everyone who start doing a project. In a project, you know, when you start doing a project, it's beginning of, it's beginning of the, you know, uh, doing an independent investigation or it's beginning of learning to use the scientific method. Okay. See, in a project, you are given certain, uh, you know, topic, okay, a topic indirectly uh, states an hypothesis, okay, and then you are supposed to collect evidence to support the hypothesis, okay, and develop, develop around this hypothesis. So that is uh, what is expected from a topic. So, so don't, don't think that this is meant only for research. When I say research is any independent investigation in which a student uh, is expected to learn by collecting material from multiple sources, okay, uh, maybe not just encyclopedias, maybe, uh, you know, uh, monographs, research monographs, or maybe from, um, you know, research papers. So just, we just had a, uh, we just went through this, so I will skip this. Uh, we went through uh, different parts of a uh, and uh, definitely keywords are important because they quickly tell you what is the broad area which is being investigated. Uh, now, why why we look at this way to read a paper? Okay, this is a this is a difficult uh, uh, problem that is typically faced by a person who starts doing a project independently. Okay. So nowadays you give some topic to the student, the student immediately goes to Google and types the keywords and well, he either gets some 1 million hits uh, and then comes and says, I don't know what to read. You know, there are so many, so many things to read. How can I find out? So then, of course, the tendency is to look at the first one which Google gives, which may not be a relevant uh, paper and then start reading that. Okay. Uh, or uh, the other answer that I typically get is that there is no literature on this. Why? Because Google is not giving anything. So simple answer. There is no library. There is no other source of you know finding out. 
So, uh, okay, so leave, leave that aside. Uh, so now, now let's take the first scenario where, you know, a student is given some topic and he and she comes up with, you know, finds that there are some 30, 40, 50 papers, uh, research papers in this uh, particular area, which he or she is expected to read in a short period of time, maybe in a semester. So if it's a course project, in a semester you have to read some 10, 20 papers and write a literature review. Okay. So how do you do that? One thing that we need to understand when we shift from reading a textbook to reading uh, or reading for a course to reading for a project uh, and scanning literature is that we have to move away from the idea of reading a document from first word to last word. Okay, so we have been, you know, taught from the day one from our school is that reading a particular thing means open the textbook, read the first word and read up to the last word. Okay, that is what is meant by a reading. And this, this, uh, you know, this training haunts you for a very long time, even after you start doing research, sometimes for many years. So, uh, we have to learn to quickly grasp what is there in the research paper and then make a judgment whether I want to spend more time on it or not. Okay. And well, uh, doing this business of, you know, reading every word of a particular document, you might end up doing for only, you know, few, few, few papers. And you should be able to first come up with a short list in which you need to read the paper from first, first line to last line. Okay. So here is a method given by uh, Professor Keshav from uh, University of Waterloo, uh, from a Canadian University. Well, he has given a three pass method to uh, read a paper. So first pass he says is observe, the second pass is judge, and the third pass is understand. And I'm going to spend some time talking about these three passes. The first pass is when you want to quickly scan a paper. Okay, so here uh, advice is to read the title and the abstract and the introduction. Okay, as the case may be, maybe you want to go back and also read literature review. If literature review and introductions are separate, you may want to quickly scan the literature review. Because this is, this is where the broader part of the paper, connection with what is existing body of knowledge is discussed. Okay. What is the objective? What is the, you know, what are the method that is broadly going to be used? All that is discussed in this part, you know, in the abstract and introduction. Then you should just browse through the headings and skip details, skip content. Okay. And then jump to the conclusions. Well, not in the literal sense. You shouldn't jump, jump to the conclusion about the paper, but jump to the conclusion section of the paper. Okay. And uh, look at the conclusions, look at the introduction, look at the abstract. This is a quick pass. Okay. Uh, what you should note, you should note the following points. You should note the bibliographic details. Who is the communicating author? Well, you want to know what is the authenticity of this person's work? So, uh, typically, in a in a research group, uh, the person who is supervising the research is the communicating author. So, my if I'm writing a student uh, a paper with my PhD student, my PhD student will be the first author. He is the one who has done the work, but I might be the communicating author. Okay. So, uh, look at who is the communicating author, and. Then try to quickly classify the paper, whether this is a review paper, it's a short communication, you know, adding something to existing body of knowledge by some small improvements, or it's a, it's an original article, which is some detailed investigation on some. Then we can uh, also categorize what kind of work is reported, whether it is uh, experiments have been conducted and mainly it's reporting the experimental work, whether it is some computations and simulations, some new theory, new uh, theory is being proposed and developed. You know, you should uh, probably note things like uh, digital object identifier, uh, DOI, 
because it's easy to share. This DOI is a unique number for any uh, net document, and you can share uh, with your co-researchers, co co-workers, DOI for a particular. You should look at broad area of the work and look for the keywords. What are the keywords? And uh, and in the abstract, in the title and the abstract. And this pass should not take too much time. From the introduction, from the abstract, you should be able to formulate what is the main question that is being investigated. Okay, and what is the answer that has been provided? Okay, this should be clear from the introduction, abstract, and conclusions. When I'm saying this, I'm indirectly giving you a hint how you should structure your documents. When you write any document, a project report, or a thesis, or a paper, or a patent, okay, introduction, conclusions, uh, and abstract should communicate two most important things. What is the question that is being asked or and what is the answer that is provided? Okay, so this should come clearly. So, uh, well, you can actually then categorize whether a new observation has been reported or an old observation is being tested, old hypothesis is being tested on some new system. Uh, so, you could categorize the paper uh, quickly without getting into reading it line by line, word by word. Okay, so here we should not try to judge in the first pass. Just try to record what is this, what is what is the broad area, what is the question being asked, and what is the answer provided, and uh, try to summarize the paper in less than 20, 30 words. Okay, uh, Professor Keshava thinks that it can take five to 15 minutes. I would say this is five to 15 minutes for an expert. If you are beginning to read papers, maybe it will take you 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, read read the introduction abstract and then form the question and try to write the answer which the authors have provided. The next pass, the second pass is judgmental and again we are not going to read the paper from first, first sentence to last sentence. Okay. So now we are going to look at, we are going to analyze the uh, paper in more detail. For example, I might decide to look at uh, you know, in a scientific paper in which uh, experiments have been carried out, I decide to look at the figures and illustrations. Okay. Now, when you have done any experiments, okay, uh, if you are if you are a careful researcher, you would put these error bars. What are the error bars? Can somebody help me? In a figure, what are the error bars? Have you seen figures with error bars? Maximum and minimum error. So, so what you what 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 we do typically when you are doing experiments is that you repeat the experiments multiple times, okay, and then you report the mean and you know maybe two standard deviations, mean and three standard deviations. You give a band around the mean, so to tell you that actually my observations were lying in this region, okay. Majority of my observations were lying in plus or minus three sigma, plus or minus two sigma. So you give this band, error bars. If if a researcher who is doing experimental work is giving a figure with error bars, that tells you that this researcher or this research group is very, very careful. They repeated the experiments. They are not giving you one of the results. Okay? So it's it's important to see all these small things. Just look at whether axis is properly marked, whether the figures are neatly drawn. So is the problem stated clearly? You know, again, we are not getting into two details of reading the paper, but we can start browsing, we can start scanning the content, and then try to make a judgment whether the problem has been stated clearly in the introduction, in the, is the motivation for the work stated clearly, connection with the literature stated clearly. The solution methodology adopted, is it justified? Okay. Again, what is the methodology adopted? You should be able to make out just by reading uh, introduction and conclusions. And then from your own understanding of the subject, you could make a comment, well, this uh, new approach seems to be interesting. It, should, it doesn't seem to be uh, you know, a good idea to use this approach or whatever, whatever is your judgment. So 
the second pass gentle and we try to look at look at many other things for example i would want to see has this author done similar work in the past an important consideration because uh, if somebody has been working in the area for quite some time that again gives authenticity to his uh, you know his work uh, but it is also uh, is also one more one more thing many times nowadays you find uh, many researchers over publishing okay there may not be significant improvement you you try to scan papers of particular group or particular author and you see that there are some minor improvements over the last last paper okay so that also that also you can note whether this is a minor improvement over the previous work whether it is a major difference so um so note down your judgments and uh this professor keshava again things should not take more than 15 20 minutes so overall if you are a beginner you know pass 1 plus pass 2 sh should take about 40 to 45 minutes or 40 to 50 minutes okay so here in this 40 to 50 minutes we haven't read the paper from first line to last line okay now if if this paper crosses these two stages that is after having done the judgment okay if you think you want to go further and read the paper okay then you would do what is called as the third pass the understanding pass okay so this for any project whether it is uh you know your final year undergraduate project or whether it is your phd thesis you might do it only for few documents for example if you are doing your masters work you might read uh, a paper thoroughly from one first line to last line maybe four or five papers okay let's say in my domain in engineering uh, you might end up reading 40 papers okay in your review to put the work in the context but all the 40 papers i have not read from the first line to last line okay this this reading is like a thorough reading of a paper and it it can take few hours to few days it is not it's not a so read the methodology very very carefully okay then go back and read the literature so this is not reading only one paper we should go back and trace the literature and see just suppose the work presented in this work in this paper with reference to what has been already done in the literature okay so just read the relevant books and literature uh read every sentence critically so this is where you know you are reading a paper the way you were reading a textbook earlier but there is a big difference there is a big difference in the textbooks you were never questioning you never you never thought that this could be wrong okay now when you are reading a paper you are reading it with a critical mind with a questioning mind this what is being presented may not be correct okay may need improvement okay may be partially correct okay so it's it's it depends upon okay it's good to do a mental recreation of the work if what what would you do if you were to do this okay so that uh, helps in understanding uh, a research paper uh well verify if there are mathematical proofs you should try and work them out yourself this mental recreation of the work that how you would have done it actually it brings in much more clarity in what the authors are trying to present you could also you could also mentally try to look at alternate approaches that you would use to solve this problem so don't have to actually sit and solve it but you know if uh, a method a has been used to solve a problem and you know what if method b was used what would happen you could you could actually think about all the possibilities that might lead to new research ideas for example you should look for is there a missed literature quite quite often it happens that uh, many uh, so so the the body of knowledge has grown so large that uh, you know one of the reasons uh, that we subject a work to uh, peer review is that because the peers collectively are reading the literature okay and then uh, we hope that uh, you know uh, a similar work has not been done already so that that we try to that we hope to find from these experts from these peers okay so you when you are reviewing a paper 
or a research paper or uh, a thesis, you should try to see whether there is a missed literature, something has already been done, not been reported. Okay. Uh, now, when you are submitting a review, a report on the thesis or on the paper, you should write down the overall purpose as you see it, what is the problem and what is the thesis. Uh, the introduction of the paper introduce this. Uh, look at the body of the work, look at the correctness of the work. Uh, is the paper focused on these goals? So we should actually look at this. In the introduction, is the problem stated clearly? And does the, does the main body of work focusing on the problem that has been stated? Or it's meandering over something else? So all the reasons given, uh, or the proofs given, do they justify the claims? So this is a this is the involved long process, okay. And this is something in which we need to train ourselves because, you know, your coursework doesn't train you to do this. That is to look at things critically in a questioning manner, okay. So we have to we have to train ourselves in doing this. So we have to look at conclusions. Are the conclusions properly bringing out what has been investigated? Is this a strong finish or it's not stated properly? Of course, you should check grammar and things, other things that are important like typos. Uh, examine citations, whether the citations have been correctly given uh, for correctness, for completeness, for formatting style. And you should collect your final comments. So this is, this is what you need to do when you review a paper or when you review a thesis or when you review a report at whatever level, whatever level. So we, when, when, when we are reviewing a report uh, here in IIT Bombay for undergraduate project, we try to apply the same ideas that we would apply for an MTech thesis or, well, we may not expect the same rigor from an undergraduate student, but, but conceptually it should be similar structure. Okay, because again, even if it is an undergraduate project, it is under some small hypothesis being tested, some small model being used. Okay. And it's an investigation which is independent, which is not copying from a book. It is some kind of an independent investigation. So it is subject to all these tests. Okay. So this, this uh, exercise, you might end up doing for a few papers when you are doing your research, or a few documents when you are doing your research. Uh, or as, as a role, in the role of an examiner, you might do this for, uh, for your students. Okay. So these are the three passes of, and you should read this paper by Professor Keshav. Uh, it's just a two page document. It's very nice. It has nothing to do with uh, science or technology. It is just reading a scientific document, a document prepared scientifically. Okay. Scientific document doesn't mean natural sciences. Any science, any document that has been prepared using the scientific method. Okay. Uh, and then this uh, book, The Craft of Research is also a useful document. Okay, thank you.